I'm not. I'm just sitting here looking at pictures from the Russian Revolution. Uh, did you know your great, 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 great grandpa was in the Russian Revolution? Oh. Yes, would you like me to tell you about it? No, I would just like to see the pictures. All right. Ah, sweetie, you see, at first, Russia was an autocracy, and that meant that one ruler got to control all of Russia. Russia had improved a lot from the past hundreds of years, and they had abolished serfdom in 1861. Culture in Russia also, also encouraged pogroms, or mass killings of an ethnic group, specifically the Jewish people. Russia was friends with other countries that weren't autocracies, like France and Great Britain. The alliance of these three countries was known as the Triple Entente. Ah, and this is a picture of Nicholas II. He ruled Russia, and he was the last Tsar ever. Nicholas's army wasn't that great, and it didn't help that he liked to lead the troops because he wasn't the best general ever. In the time he ruled, Russia had fallen apart. Nicholas was married to Tsarina Alexandra. She was known to insulate her husband from events in Russia, and she was stubborn and ignorant. The people didn't like her very much. She believed that a scandalous Siberian peasant would heal her son, Alexis, from his worsening hemophilia. This man went by the name of Rasputin. Rasputin spent more and more time with the Tsar and Tsarina, and became trusted and thought of as loyal. He became more influential and was not afraid to mend the government affairs. This made the people of Russia even more upset with the Tsar's rule. Some people say that Russia first started to decline in 1904 at the start of the Russo-Japanese War. Russia tried to expand and take over Japan, but the Japanese people fought back and won. The people of Russia were shocked and even more upset. This also caused railroads to decline in Russia, and soon there were food shortages because of the transportation problems. And you see, Russia was angry with the government, so on March 7, 1965, I believe, later to be known as Bloody Sunday, protesters gathered at St. Petersburg. Russian troops opened fire on the peaceful protesters and killed hundreds. By this point, the people were furious. In 1905, a revolution broke out, and there was chaos everywhere. Peasants burned down the houses of landowners, and all ethnic groups revolted. Soon the government had to give in, and they created the Duma. Ah, uh, the Duma, yes. The Duma was Russian's legislative assembly. This meant that the people of Russia had more control over their government. The Duma made people happy and stopped the revolts for a while. In Russia, early Soviets was... A, a, Early Soviets were a social group that supported workers' rights and unions. This is a picture of your great, 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 great grandpa and his Soviet friends in 1915. Their determination would soon lead them to power. In March 1917, a series of strikes broke out in Petrograd, the new name of St. Petersburg. Women started making a difference on March 8th when about 10 thousand proud female workers protested throughout the city demanding bread. Nicholas II sent troops to stop it, but soon significant numbers of the troops actually started joining the women. The situation was so out of control, the Tsar had no power. Soon, the Duma had to set up a provisional government or a temporary government until things got sorted out. The prime minister of this provisional government was Alexander Kandinsky. Kerensky was famous for releasing some Bolshevik from prison to protect Petrograd from being taken over by the rogue general. Soon, a man named Lenin came around. He led the Bolshevik, a faction of the Marxist Social Democratic Party. Lenin was uncompromising and encouraged the people who fought him to be violent. He thought that, that the provisional government was an opportunity for the Bolsheviks. Lenin wanted a classless society, and once he gained control, he planned to redistribute all land to the peasants. Now, a very important moment for Russia happened on the night of November 6, 1917. Remember, that night, the Bolshevik took over the provisional government. Lenin was now in power, and he wanted to please the people. Soon, he nationalized Russia and gave the land to local rural Soviets and gave control of the factories to workers' com committees. 
Lennon only planned to do this temporarily to make him popular. His most famous change was the new economic policy in 1921, which allowed small businesses to open even when banks and trades were strictly controlled by the government. It also required a small percentage of goods from all citizens. Another addition was Lenin's Treaty of Brest-Listowak with Germany. It gave Germany a large amount of land. Lenin had to do this to fulfill his promise to peace to Russia. Lenin told everyone that even though they lost land, it didn't make a difference because soon socialism would take over the world. Starting around 1918, people began to fight back against the new Bolshevik rule and started a Russian civil war, thus dividing the country into two. One side was known as the Whites. The Whites' main focus was being opposing the Bolshevik rule. The Whites were not successful because it was difficult for them to work together and form a common goal. The closest they ever got to success was under General Denikin in 1919 when three different white troops were attacking the Bolshevik at once and they were later pushed back. The other side was the Reds, Bolshevik supporters. The Reds were very successful and maintained Bolshevik rule. An old Menshevik known as Totsky was persuaded by the Reds and joined their side, along with all his great military skills and secrets. The Reds were organized and used a strategy known as War Communism. In this policy, power was centralized and under Bolshevik control, grains and food were collected from the peasants and banks were taken over. The Reds also had their own secret police, known as the Cheka. The Cheka were terrified and tormented any person who opposed the Bolshevik. Now, at the end of the Civil War, the communist Bolshevik had control of Russia. It was amazing that what started out as a small, radical group could actually take over all of Russia. Isn't that interesting, sweetie? Yeah. And that was the Russian Revolution. Interesting.